And then we're ready to record. So we're good. Re recording. Go uh, so for Zoom, most people are on mute right now. If you're on a computer, you can actually hit the space bar and hold that down to speak if you wanna if you wanna um, you know say something. So with that, got a lot of things open here, and we'll move on to uh, our meeting. So. Tonight is November, actually Wednesday, November 18th. Uh, this is the meeting of the Inland Wetlands and Conservation Commission for the town of Weathersfield. In accordance with the governor's executive order, we are meeting virtually uh, via Zoom. At this point in the meeting, I'd like to open up the meeting to uh, general comments so that anybody could address the commission at this time. I didn't receive any requests. Mr. Okay. Chairman for comment. So you didn't get any ahead of time. So sensing that there's no, oh, Matt? Mr. Chairman, if you just uh, could give me a leave for about one minute. A okay. what? Leave, could I give leave to address the commission for one minute? What's a leave? Uh, ability. Oh, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I, I'm asking you permission, that's. Really oh, excellent. Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry, I'll get the legal's got to get out of my brain. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> just a heads up, there's a little bit of uh, static from 8445, the, the person calling in or so forth. I don't know if there's ability to, to mute that button. Um, just, um, I do know that council has some interest in the discussion that you might have on the dock tonight. I believe that there was scheduled discussion for that. So if there's any way to front load that conversation, I would just ask for a little consideration in that. I do have about a half an hour with you if, it, if we go that long until I've got my next Zoom meeting. Um, so if that is possible, I just ask for, I won't ask for leave, but I might ask for, for, for any consideration. Um, do you guys wanna bring that to the front of the meeting? Brant or Brian or anybody? What, what was that again? I didn't so, really catch we were gonna, uh, Brian, I mean, um, sorry, Derek had sent us some information about uh, some activity over at the 1860 reservoir that had been noted. And we were going to discuss it under, um, was it, it wasn't under the general, well, or where was, we, when we were gonna discuss that, Derek? It was gonna be added at the end of the meeting as item yeah. E. So, so if we want to discuss it now to have Matt in on the discussion as well, we could add it at the front end of the meeting. Yeah, there's a couple options. Uh, there's two issues. One was some potential impact to the wetlands and floodplain, and one was related to the dock um, that Mr. Forrest is refer referring to. So, and we could just talk about the dock. That's kind of a separate issue. If that's your main concern, Matt, and handle the wetlands and floodplain later. However you want to do it. I'm just gonna. I'm just liaising, of course, in that capacity. But any if there if if it is in reference to um, any issues with with the wetlands area and the dock, you know, I'm definitely gonna report back as to what you guys think about. I don't know if the in, the wetlands issue you're referring to is related to the dock or not related to the dock. But if it's all part of that same project there, then yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would give, I was gonna give everybody an update. So if you want me to do it quickly we could do that and James is the it. chair I'm just the liaison yeah I'm open to it does anybody object or I know everybody's on mute I'm okay with it okay so let's discuss okay. and then Derek can you give us some background and your observations and history of this uh, yes uh, let me <laughs> one of the applicants is calling me maybe he's having trouble getting in so just give me a moment oh okay Open that too. Oh, this bar sucks. Fuck, that's not love it. It's a great computer. I think somebody's off mute. Okay, sorry about that. We have uh, one of the applicants going to be coming in. So um, let me just admit 
a couple people here and I could get started. Um, yeah, so I had received uh, email correspondence from a resident in town that um, raised some concern about some potential wetland clearing and uh, dock installation at the 1860 Reservoir uh, on Monday. Um, just to show you a plan of it, I'm going to share my screen to give you a, kind of an overview of the property and what was discussed. All right, can everyone see that screen with the aerial photo? Yes. Okay. All right, so this is uh, 123 Robeth Lane. It's on the north side of the uh, reservoir. Um, what you're looking at here is that here's the house, the driveway coming down off the street. This yellow line is the approximate wetland limit from our town map. The blue shading, the light blue, is the approximate uh, floodplain. Um, the email correspondence we had gotten uh, indicated that there may have been some work down in this area and there was a, potentially a dock put in. So I had a uh, schedule. I went out and met with the owner yesterday afternoon to walk the site. Um, and, and look at what had been done. And uh, I'm gonna share some pictures and kind of give you an overview of what, what had been happening. So before I get to that, um, here's a picture standing kind of in the middle of the yard near, near where the wetland line was looking towards the pond. Um, it's, it was evident when I was out there that at some point, they don't all look very recent, but there were some trees that were, he claimed were dead that he cut down. Um, he, he didn't remove the stumps, they remained. Um, and I think it probably looking at some point in the past, looking at the other areas surrounding this, there probably was some brush clearing at the surface, but I didn't see anything at the time I was out there to indicate there had been any, any grade changes or any excavation work going on as far as having an impact on floodplain capacity or uh, an impact on a, a wetland area necessarily. I mean, this didn't look like something that just recently happened. Some of these stumps look like they've been like that for many years. Um, so this was a view looking towards the pond. This is kind of the area that was brought to our attention. Um, you see in the back there, there's a kayak and that's down where the, the makeshift dock is. And I'll show you that in a moment. This picture this. is just same area, just turned around looking back up uh, through the woods towards the house. As you can see, I mean, it's, it's a low area, but it's pretty dry. I guess it's normally covered with leaves. Uh, his landscaper had just come through and kind of blew them off. Um, but basically that's what I found as far as I didn't see anything significant in, in my opinion as far as anything that was done recently or significant that would have an impact on wetlands or floodplain. Um, Derek, that's just he, my opinion. Is this his property or is this town property? So this is his property. Okay. Let me go back to that plan. So what we're looking at is kind of this area in here at the back of his property. His property goes pretty far down to the water's edge. And this next picture shows down, this is town property. I think the town boundary is a few feet behind the photo here. What this is, is actually a uh, picnic table that he cut the legs off and laid one side on some concrete that's there at the edge of the, that I don't think he put in, it's old. And had the legs sitting on the bottom on the other side. He was just using that to help him um, launch with his kayak. The photos that were sent, from uh, November 8th, I believe, that I received on Monday, had two different um, boards out here. And then he said that originally he had um, the, the chairs or the benches that go with the table, and he had those in there. Um, and that's what's in the photo with the, with the concern that was raised. Um, he said that he did this on Saturday with his son. They just trying to make it more sturdy. Um, so with that, this is on town property. Um, as has been mentioned, we, we have some other locations around the pond that have docks or actually more formal docks. I, I, I'd say this is a dock with quotes because it's just kind of a makeshift uh, platform um, that we have other areas that we're trying to figure out a way to work with the owners and determine what's what needs to happen with those docks. So I did discuss this with the town manager. Um, his opinion was he wanted me to direct him, direct the owner to, to remove it for that reason because we are trying to prevent these from being on the on the reservoir mostly because they're on town property and there's a liability associated with them. Even though this is not quite a permanent structure like some of the others might be, um, he said it's really just laid there. You could just pull it out and take it out. So um, my intention based on that discussion is that I'm gonna send him a letter notifying him to, he's gotta take that out off of town property. Um, the decision from the commission tonight is more related to what happened in the floodplain, the wetlands, which you know includes this. I didn't see any real disturbance related to this yet either. 
Um, so it would be a matter if the commission felt there was any need to have him apply and come in for, you know, cutting some of the trees and some of the brush clearing work he had done. Does anyone have questions I can answer? I think Sue's asking to be let into the meeting to yeah. start off with. Just saw her. And then you were saying that none of the clearing appeared to be fresh. It didn't look like that to me. Um, let's see. I mean, this ground cover looked to be dirt that had been there for a while. And like you said, the leaves were blown off it. Um, yeah. There's there's a stump here that looked kind of aged. There were a few other stumps in the area. Uh, but I certainly didn't see anything. It's a pretty flat level yard going quite a ways back to the house. So I didn't see anything that would indicate you filled or you, you know, certainly uh, as far as the floodplain concerned, did any filling. Um, that was just my opinion being out there, but I didn't notice anything. I, you know, a lot of times we get a complaint like this and we'll go out there and there's wood chips everywhere and trees down and dirt piled up. And yeah, it wasn't, I'm not seeing anything like that. Any of yeah. that no. <clears throat> it almost looks like a campsite to me, but. I, I, I think one of the, the primary concerns is probably the dock of just based on, you know, conversations I've had with that um, resident that brought it to our attention in the past. And I think we can address that by having them take it out. Um, like I said, there was really no construction work to put it in. It was just kind of set in there on the edge. So I don't think taking it out would have any uh, disturbance either. I remember Don discussing <laughs> similar type um, issues around the reservoir as well. And I think it was handled in a similar manner. My yeah, we've, we've had this happen a couple of years ago, a few houses up. Um, the, the person who brought it to our attention said he, he thought that Don had been dealing with this back in 2017. Um, this owner came in in late 2017, so it may have been a different owner. Uh, I did run that by Don Moiso, the previous wetland agent, and he, he didn't have a recollection of it, so I don't have any record of what necessarily was discussed. Um, but uh, like you said, we've, you know, this is, this is the first time we've had someone put a structure in that we are seeing just happen. So we can, we can address it in a different way without having to involve the commission. So Derek, he's putting this in just so he can get his kayak in and out without getting his feet wet. Yeah. Seems very minor to me that an owner should be able to do something like that. But yeah, well, we've, you know, this is a, a much larger discussion about some of, you know, this is what kind of, like I said, kind of a gray area. You know, he yeah. asked me, can I walk down and launch my boat? I said, yeah, you know, it's public property. You're, you're able to utilize it. You just, you know, at this point, we're taking the stand that you just can't have any kind of structures on there. Um, you know, going to the extreme example of he had a family member there and they fell and they got hurt. Technically, they're on town property. They're not on his property. And that's the concern yeah. we have with some of the docks that are present. And many of those have been there for a long time um, that are on town property around the reservoir. People, mm -hmm. a lot of people just don't understand where they think they own to the water. And they right. don't realize that there's a space between the end of their property and the actual edge of the water. So, so Matt, based on your understanding of the town council's interest, do you have anything to add to discussion or? No, not at all. I mean, I'm just being informed for the most part. I know that there are, it seems like there are other docks that are on there and there's sort of a uh, prevalence that was already described before. And if there's any concern by Inland Wetland or what the regulations are. So you could just go back to another picture of the close up of the, <clears throat> you know, of the. Uh, is there, now you see this looks like a launch site. Uh, where the, wa where the water comes nicely right up to this sort of path. So what is this appear to be like, I'm gonna, like dug out? Like I feel like there would be naturally, there would be reeds that would grow along the water line, you know, naturally, like there wouldn't be that, hole, that water hole, if you will, that little channel, and it's not really a channel, of course. So is that all improvements in the wetlands there, like in the water then? My suspicion is at some point in the past, someone did do some work to kind of dig that out and take the plants out. I have no evidence from what I could see from aerial photos or from being out there that it was done by this owner. It wasn't anything that was done recently. So that could be, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to tell from aerial photos. So yes, to your point, I mean, naturally this probably would have that, uh, those Phragmites coming right across through here and be all well. And so it probably did occur at some point. I just don't have any information as to when. And I don't know, 
I, I have not read up on the inland wetlands, you know, regulations thoroughly, but is that, is that removal and that type of concept of violation, is it in wetlands best interest that we want to get it back to the way to sort of its natural habitat? What are the regulations? I'm saying this generally, not specifically, so I can liaison back that, you know, what is the inland wetlands set of, you know, um, of goals, the right word, but strategy maybe, or understanding about how the area is supposed to be managed? All right, so that would be uh, an option, and, and this is town property, so in the absence of having someone to point to and say, you just did this and you need to put it back, yeah, it's something we could do. We would have a right to go in and, and, and restore this area to what it was, because it is our property. Um, I just, I don't know if we have any leverage to tell that owner, you got to do it if we have no proof that he's the one who, who necessarily did this much work that you pointed yeah. out. And I'm not, well, it's pretty common with our enforcement actions that something, some activity recently occurred, you know? Is yeah, right, Derek? <laughs> Correct. I wonder if there's even like some signage that should start to be posted. It said like, you know, here's where the line is, you know, in those sort of popular hunting areas when I'm out in the woods and stuff like that, you know, you know, like entering public property, entering private property, there's usually pretty good signage, you know, whether it's disturbed or not. Is yeah, the 1860 that... reservoir piece properly monumented and everything or? Um, I can't answer that. I don't know. I mean, there are a lot of properties that surround the reservoir. Um, you know, there are, options that we can discuss like signing like sending out notifications to all the owners kind of explaining where their property ends like i said a lot of them i don't think even realize it um, might be you know a good uh, educational um, task we can go through to try and help with that um, but all these things are, are currently in the town manager's office to work with the town attorney and figure out what's the best way forward um, for a dealing with the ones that are there aside from this one and B, you know, how, how do we prevent this from, from happening when people are, are doing things on town property that they're not authorized to do? You know, I, I do recall we dealt with something like this several years back. I don't believe it was the same property, but I think, you know, it was, it was a dock of some kind. We did tell the guy to get rid of it. Um, and I don't think it was this guy. I think it was down further down probably more towards the main road there, Highland Street, that way. Different yeah, there was another issue a couple of years ago uh, that was similar and that was a different situation where it was pretty clear work was just done and we yeah. had him come in and get a permit and restore it. Uh, did he, do you recall, did he actually have to put in plantings or something? I, I, I think in terms of being natural, you'd let whatever grows there, you know, revitalize. Once yeah, I don't. I don't recall actually uh, requiring plantings. I believe they, um, you know, they had some trees that they were going to take out the brush and they put, they had put wood chips down by the water to kind of fill into the water area and all that had to get removed. So there's some work they had to do. I don't know, planting wise, I think it was just more of like, take out what you've disturbed and that nature will, you know, take its course and yeah. kind of grow back. I suspect a lot of the reeds here are gonna grow right back up if uh, they're just left alone. Um, I don't know, there is that one clear, it looks like a path down to the, the dock area. So he must have taken something out there. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure he, util he utilizes it. He says he does to, to get out into the uh, reservoir. And I'm guessing looking at the area, maybe his prior owners had used it too. Um, mm -hmm. You know, accessing the reservoir from there is not the issue. But um, yeah, I mean, there really shouldn't be continued clearing or cutting of any of the wetland areas down here on mm -hmm. town property. Pull the, pull the cement out in the dock and uh, let nature take its course. They're receptive to, to pulling all that out of there, the, the dock and everything, or the yeah, picnic he, table? He didn't, um, he didn't seem to be upset if he had to. He said, you know, it was really a temporary thing. You could just pull it out if it was problematic. So I told him I would talk with the town manager and I would speak with the commission tonight about, you know, how we want to go forward. Is this, Derek, you see on this picture on the top, it, it appears, and I, I may be wrong, that like there's a cutting of all these, you know, of all the reeds behind that tree, it looks like. You know, is that cleared out? Is that, that would have been recent. That's not like years old. And there's yeah. stones, stones and cement. I don't know if that's cement or not. That we put in no, the that's, yeah, 
that cement that I think has been there for a while. Um, some of this laid down here. Yeah, I, I didn't look too much at that. I, I suspect, you know, like you said, there probably was some of that he had done. I think if that's left alone, it will just grow back. So I think as part of our, part of my response to him regarding removing the dock, some of that's going to talk about, you know, clarifying where his property line is and, and not having rights to, to do things like that. So I don't know if that, what happened there requires any kind of restoration. I think if we let it go, it's going to just come back. So um, that's part of the educational process we'll do yeah. with this owner. And maybe we should think about doing with some of the other owners around the circumference of the reservoir. Yeah, that was my question, Derek. Are we applying the same guidelines and restrictions? Because you had mentioned there's more permanent structures at the uh, reservoir. Are we applying the same restrictions and guidelines to other property owners? Uh, currently we are. The, the, the docks that are there now are docks that are, have been there a very long time. I don't believe we were able to locate records of them coming through and getting permits to put them in. Um, it would have been unlikely the town would have said, yeah, go ahead and put a dock on our property and, and utilize it. Um, so that's part of the discussion we've had with the town manager and the town attorney is, you know, how do we, how do we broach this with those owners? Um, there's options to have them take them out. Um, the town could take them out. They're on our property. Um, we've talked about other options where, you know, maybe they need to come in and go through the formal review process and, and get an approval if it's going to stay, but they may need to get an easement from the town that releases us from any liability to access it. Um, you know, whatever we end up doing with those, we'll set a precedent for what we're going to do going forward. So right now we're, you know, something like this is pretty easy. If, if he was putting a 50 foot dock out into here and spent $15,000 to do it, we'd have a much bigger problem on how we're going to handle it. But I think with him, he seemed pretty uh, easy enough to, to he, that he would agree to just take it out. Not to say it won't, you know, end up back after we do inspections. You, you just don't know. But I, I suspect that there are, um, you know, people that utilize the reservoir and look for these types of things. So when that happens, we will usually hear about it. How, uh, in terms of giving people notice, I'm not sure I'd be in favor of signs because, you know, that's kind of disturbing nature itself. But it seems like if we decide that the docks ought to be removed and nobody ought to be putting them up, the, the property owners around the reservoir ought to be getting notice that uh, this is not a permissible use of town property. Um, so that at least that way they get informed could do a mailing i suppose yeah we could yeah. do a general mailing oh, to all of the butters that's something that's been discussed um honestly i don't know where it stands right now with the town attorney and the town manager as far as the existing docs this is something that's i know it's been kicking around for a few years uh the previous manager was working on it and it, it just didn't get too far so um that's something we'll you know, the whole, I'm hoping we can move forward on and, and find some resolution. Whatever happens, it, it will evolve this commission. Um, whether or not they're going to have to come in to get permits for what's there, or there's going to be some permits needed to remove what's there, um, I suspect you'll be hearing about it and be involved in that process when we get to it. Okay. So for this one, we'll, well, you'll send them a letter. I'll, uh, I'll send them to remove a letter. This. Yep. Um, I can, you know, I can uh, send you the correspondence to kind of close the loop on the, on, on the dock issue. And I guess you just can let me know uh, how you feel about what's been done. If you feel there's a need for permits or not, and I'll go with, I'll respond that in whatever manner I need to. I have the, have the other uh, intrusions into the wetlands been reviewed by this committee as well? Talking about the other docks from the past, yeah, docks, uh, structures, cut, cutting of wetlands, you know, channels like don't dug like this, whatever it is. When it occurs and we're notified of it, the yes, answer does come to this commission. Um, like I said, with regard to the docks, I believe looking back as aerial photos going back a while, they've been there a long time. I don't know when they actually appeared. Um, you know, it's something we we need we need to address, and we're looking into it. So, I mean, has have those violations come before this this committee before, or has that not come before this committee? 
I don't have any record of it coming before the committee. Yeah, but. Matt, as I, as I mentioned, we, I, I do recall at least one other dock uh, up the road more towards the Highland Street uh, that yeah, action was taken on. It came before the committee, uh, I believe, as a violation. I don't think it was. Right. And, and uh, I, know, I know Don in the past, too, consulted at, administratively. Yeah. You know, with, with, you know, very similar to this. It, here, somebody put something out there. Hey, I'm going to be issuing a normal letter. This, this sounds reasonable. There's no other ground disturbance and so forth. Yeah, and for what it's worth, the town even has come to us for a permit for uh, road improvements on the other side of the reservoir, you know, where you drive in. Um, oh, yeah, when they put some process down. Uh, so that's right adjacent to the reservoir. So, you know, basically anything that goes on there really should come before the commission. Yeah, I guess I was just thinking for consistency. If, you know, I understand that there's this one and you'll be sending out the appropriate letters and perhaps the one that happened, you know, last year or the year before. But I think that we've been notified of two, three, four, Derek, please correct me if I'm wrong, other instances. And I don't know if those, you know, if those other instances haven't come before this particular board and it's appropriate that they do, it seems to be consistent that all the docks and um, changes should come before and then you guys can be consistent with that. Is that, yeah. if that hasn't happened, you wouldn't want, even if it's an old violation, you know, well, a violation that's been around a long time. I don't disagree with that. I suggest we can follow up with the town manager and see where that stands. Um, that's true. And that's what I was saying. It's going to involve whatever happens one way or another or whatever avenue we take will involve this commission. Um, the difference being that, as was stated earlier, we usually get involved. Something happens recently and we're made aware of it. We deal with it. You know, those, those issues, those docs that went in 20, 25 years ago, yeah, they shouldn't have gone in. And yes, it is a violation. It's being reviewed. That's all I can say at this point. I, I've had some conversations with the manager about it, but I don't know where those stand at, at this time. Okay. Yeah, my, my only concern, Derek, is uh, that the guidelines are equally um, um, communicated to anyone that has a dock. It would be, to me, very unfair if this guy has to remove a picnic table and there's docks out there that are permanent structures. Um, it just doesn't seem right that other people would have them on, on board. Like if I was a homeowner, um, and I just put out this table and my neighbor's got a permanent dock. I would uh, not be happy about that. Uh, how, how are you made aware of this? You, you probably said it, but how are you made aware of this uh, table out here? Did a neighbor complain? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, I said I included in the packet. We got an email from a resident that had taken some photos over the last few years and felt that I think he was really pointing out that there's been some clearing as in his opinion and the, and the dock and the dock that was put in, which, um, like I said, he's, you know, he's very, um, good about kind of keeping an eye on what's going on out there at the reservoir. Right. Okay. Thank you. Another thing that you, you may have find in your talks with the town attorney and town managers, some of those older structures may have had permission, but it's that's, possible. we would, we wouldn't know that, you know, at this point in time. Okay. So is that look like an acceptable course, guys, or with this? Brent, Brian, John, Mary. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, uh, that course of action. Okay. All right, so yeah. that sounds good. Thanks, guys. I do have my meeting coming up right now, but and I appreciate You're welcome. Any questions, concerns, thoughts you want to pass over to council, call me up, send me an email. I'll Zoom privately with you, anything you need. Will do. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, so moving on to the public meeting portion of the meeting, we have application number 725-20 ENS, uh, Weathersfield Retail LLC, 
140 Celestine Highway, parcel number 211-00. It's an application for a new drive through restaurant with site work within a regulated area. And with us tonight, representing the applicant is? Uh, Peter Alter and Dana Steele. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. For the record, uh, I'm Peter Alter. I'm a lawyer. I practice law in Glastonbury with the firm of Alter and Pearson. Dana Steele is our project engineer. He's a professional engineer at J.R. Russo. Um, and he's been our project engineer for, for this proposal. Tonight, um, Dana, I don't know, or Derek, I don't know if you want to share a map or not. Um, I can do that if uh, my if I'm going to be walking through any of it. You said that all right, Derek? Let me give it a try. Um, post disabled participant screen sharing. It says. I'm not able to at the moment. All right, then let me see. I can pull it up. What sheet do you want to see? I was well, have, you, have you disabled screen sharing? No, I think you can't request to screen share. I think I would say yes, you could. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to. It's, I'm trying to uh, share the screen, and it says host disabled participant screen sharing. So I think in your settings you have it. You have the um, participants un, unable to share. Let's try it. Try it now. Yep, that worked. Okay. Thanks. So we're looking at uh, the southeast corner of the intersection of Silestine Highway and Jordan Lane, the shopping center that has been on that site for a long time. Um, and uh, the total site is about 10.6 acres. And back in 1999, uh, we secured approval to construct a 6,000 square foot uh, outbuilding uh, in the general location that's being shown as future restaurant. And for a variety of reasons uh, that approval was never executed and, the, and that portion of the site has remained vacant uh, from that time through, through the present. We now have a proposal that's working its way through uh, boards and commissions in Wethersfield to construct a 2,500 foot restaurant with drive-through facilities. Um, and we're before you tonight, there is no wetland activity proposed. We're before you tonight because there is some flood zone uh, activity. We have some activity within the 100 year flood at elevation of 34. And obviously with erosion sedimentation control plans, uh, which are your province to review. The uh, total flood activity is, is pretty minimal. Um, we have a net gain of uh, about 125 cubic yards of flood storage with a 25 cubic yard fill and 150 cubic yard cut. Dana is, uh, I'm going to ask Dana to just walk you through the general provisions of the plan, show you uh, the flood areas and how they are being uh, worked on and then also talk about the erosion sedimentation control uh, that's in place. We did have the benefit of uh, Derek's review. Um, we got his memo and uh, Dana can also uh, indicate our responses uh, which we've provided to Derek in writing already. So Dana, why don't you go ahead? Uh, thanks, Peter. Uh, again, for the record, Dana Steele, I'm a professional engineer with J.R. Russo and Associates, and I prepared uh, these plans for this application. And I want to uh, just 
first direct you to uh, sheet two of the plan set is the existing conditions plan. This is what you're uh, used to seeing uh, from a bird's eye view anyway uh, at, this, at, at the property. We're at the north end of the property, right at the corner of Thylacine Highway and Jordan Lane. Uh, there is a, a site access off of Jordan Lane existing, uh, as well as one uh, further to the south on the Thylacine Highway, actually a couple. And this uh, uh, area that's proposed for redevelopment is the very north end of the property, it's this area here. It's currently a paved parking lot. So we're, we're op operating in an area that's already paved and just reconfiguring it and resulting in a uh, decrease in impervious area, an increase in pervious surfaces, a decrease in runoff. Uh, and so um, it's, it's a pretty um, low impact type of uh, development, making things better um, than, than they are currently. And so um, I think that that's a, a positive for the, uh, the application. Uh, as uh, Attorney Alter mentioned, uh, this property is in a flood zone, and that's why we're here. Uh, there are some wetlands uh, in a portion of the property uh, to the south, which are in this little triangular area down here. And what that is, it's a drainage ditch. The, the existing storm drainage, there's a, there's a pipe uh, coming from the north to the south here, and another one uh, uh, through a, a, a separator, a sediment chamber, uh, and then discharging to that ditch. And so that ditch is, because it's wet, because it's uh, got water introduced to it, has developed wealth and characteristics, but it's a um, man-made uh, type of uh, ditch. There, uh, this, this drains into a, a drainage ditch that runs parallel along the eastern boundary of the property that's the, uh, um, the, the, the railroad property. There's a, there's a railroad tracks just to the east of there, and between the railroad tracks and our property is this ditch, and that's where the site drains. So uh, that's going to be maintained there's going to be a reduction in, uh, in peak runoff, uh, but we're going to be continuing to send the water where it's always been going. So that's um, uh, the existing site, but um, so there is wetlands, but no wetlands in the area that we're working. So our, our, our activities here and, and the wetlands is, is, a, is a good distance uh, away, uh, more than 100 feet away from uh, any of our activity. But the um, there, it, it is in a flood zone. The FEMA flood map indicates the base flood elevation in this area is elevation 34. And so the flood line actually coincides with the 34 contour. And that's this, this line here that, uh, that comes up this, uh, um, this uh, there's like a little ditch here and it com comes up, this is like a berm here in this uh, lawn area, uh, and then the sidewalk and the driveway, and it comes across the driveway cuts into our development area slightly in this corner, the southeast corner of our development area, uh, in incorporates these, these parking spaces and, and this, uh, and this uh, uh, eastern portion of the loading area, and uh, then wraps around uh, this catch basin as well. So there's a pocket here and a pocket here that's within our development area, but very small, very small area of, of uh, encroachment. And our, our plan, our proposal, is to, uh, I'm gonna go, to, go now to our, our, our grading plan, which shows um, our proposal. We're putting silt fence around the perimeter, the area where we're working, that's this dash line to contain it, uh, where we have a, a tracking pad at the, at the entrance of the, of the area of disturbance uh, so that we can limit the amount of sediment tracking out in this area. We have silt sacks installed at the drainage structures so that if any, sediment does make it to there, they'll be captured by the, the silt sack. And, and, in, and so um, our, our activities within the flood areas, uh, which is delineated again by this, this heavier contour line, if I zoom in a little closer, it might be easier to see. You can see that that 34 contour has got a heavier line. And you see what's happening, I'm, I'm grading this so that my proposed 34 contour is further uphill from the existing. That, so therefore, there's no filling taking place, just cutting. The only filling that's taking place is uh, uh, we were asked to consider closing off what was an existing curb cut here um, in order to 
uh, provide a more uh, efficient and controlled uh, circulation of, of traffic. And we agreed that was a good idea. Um, and so we've done that. The curb itself is a little bit of raised material there. So there's some increase there, very minimal. Um, and, and then this, uh, this island over here is made, is made larger. Um, there, there was an existing island uh, here that uh, um, has been reduced uh, in size, but it's been expanded to the west and it's a little bit into the, into the flood area here. So the only fill is a little sliver here and a little sliver here. But again, you'll see here's the 34 flood limit. We're cutting it back and reducing the grade so that's increasing your flood storage. The net result is a, a pretty good uh, increase in flood storage capacity. So, so that's um, uh, again, uh, as, as has been indicated, is uh, demonstrating that there's, there's no impact, uh, negative impact to the flood storage. Uh, we're making it better. And we think that uh, th this plan um, addresses uh, any concerns that the town might have, the com this commission might have uh, for that. Um, so uh, regarding uh, uh, storm drainage, uh, we are proposing uh, one, one new drainage structure in the southwest corner of the development. Uh, we are uh, proposing roof infiltration to take the roof on off and try to, try to get uh, a little more in infiltration. The soils here are not great. Um, I, if this area were all on, there still wouldn't be much roof, much infiltration because uh, of, the, of the nature of the soils that are here. But um, we're going to put in a, a, a stone trench that's going to provide for uh, some infiltration. It's been modified in, in response to the town engineer's comments. We wanted to have 50% um, uh, of the water quality volume contained, which is your regulations talk about that um, for your, your um, L, new LID regulations uh, providing 50% um, of the water quality bond. So we calculated that um, and, and determined the size that that infiltration trench needed to be. And so we've, uh, uh, we've, we've proposed that calculations are on the plan. Um, I've, I've been in discussions with your town engineer. He had some, he had a, a list of comments that we've responded to. Uh, we submitted uh, revised plans to him. Um, I think uh, either yesterday or er earlier today. And, uh, and so um, I think he was looking at those, but uh, 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 not sure if he's completed his review of that, of, of the revised plans, but I will uh, say, I can say for the record that, that we have addressed all, all of his comments. Um, and I, I believe to his, that they'll, they'll, they will prove to be to his satisfaction, but certainly uh, we'd be uh, agreeable to any conditions of approval to ensure that that's the case uh, that, 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 we, that you would uh, want to place on, on this application. Uh, so uh, th there is roof infiltration uh, for, to provide some groundwater recharge. And then in addition to that, um, currently this site uh, has uh, impervious areas that discharge directly to uh, the wetlands with no um, uh, treatment other than uh, the uh, the sumps that are in the catch basins, which is a form of treatment. So I, would, I shouldn't say that there's no treatment, but uh, um, uh, you're asked, told that you're, again, your, your LID regulations require uh, treatment of uh, the area being developed, which is an area being disturbed is uh, um, about two thirds of an acre. And uh, the area of watershed that's uh, going to this catch basin is just, just under an acre. So, so we're talking about an area here of about, about an acre of mostly impervious surfaces. And based on uh, the size and the impervious coverage, we calculate what is required for uh, a hydrodynamic separator to provide uh, removal of sediment, uh, trapping oils, and uh, providing additional uh, treatment and cleaning of the water uh, before it reaches the wetland. And so that's proposed in this area to that circle that I'm uh, um, hovering around with my pointer. Uh, that's a, um, a new uh, water quality unit that uh, uh, would be installed uh, uh, in conformance with the DEP stormwater quality manuals uh, sizing criteria uh, for this particular site. So it would be in compliance with, with those standards. And, uh, and that would be um, the, the uh, most important I guess improvement of the site uh, from a wetland standpoint, improved water quality 
uh, we're also decreasing impervious coverage, decreasing peak flow rate, providing some infiltration. So we think that, that we've really covered all the bases in, in addressing uh, what could be concerns um, with uh, erosion controls, appropriate erosion controls, appropriate uh, treatment, and, uh, and, a, and a design, I think, that, uh, that, that works. So if, um, I think I'll, I'll leave it at that. Unless uh, uh, you have any questions, be happy to answer them. Or if I need to follow up on uh, uh, any of the town engineer specific comments, I'd be happy to do that. I didn't show you your, the, uh, our, our color plan. I meant to, meant to do that. Dana, this is Derek Greger. Hi, Derek. Hi, I just want to let you know, um, I did uh, do another review and issued a memo you know, late today, probably around six o'clock. Um, so okay. I was set to Peter to the point. Um, there's some minor comments left and the, and the commission does have a copy of that memo um, for tonight's meeting. Yeah, and I, and I just put up a, a color uh, plan here just to, um, to give you a, a little easier uh, picture of the, of the overall project. You can see the proposed building with the drive-through lane going around it, a dumpster enclosure, uh, landscaping in the landscape islands, trees along the street, uh, some trees in the landscape islands. And so the, all of those features are really going to uh, Im improve um, the uh, um, stormwater quality, improve uh, uh, the, the site. And I think this color picture is, is nice for just giving you uh, a little um, clearer picture of what, what's proposed in, 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 that, in that area. Any other questions? Uh, just, I guess, Derek, he hasn't seen the, the comments that you had. Um, no. One of the comments was in relationship to the water quality, water quality volume. And uh, I think you had a concern with the, the way the calculation was done, Derek, to, to achieve that, that volume. Yeah, we... We just need to discuss it some more. I, I have a I have a concern because of the way the system's designed. It's not really holding the water quality volume the way I think it should. So oh, you're talking about the in, the roof infiltration. Roof infiltrators that okay. we had discussed the other day. Yep. Um. I mean, I see the changes you've made. My my concern is still that you're taking that those roof leaders coming down, putting them through a perforated pipe at zero slope that that just transitions to a steeper slope pipe and goes out to a free flow outfall in a, yeah. in a catch basin. So that, yes, some water, like we discussed, we might seep through the perforations, but water's gonna take the path of least resistance. So to me, it's just gonna, you know, during a one inch storm event, like the water quality flow or water quality volume, it's gonna just pass right through the pipe and the very little is gonna be retained. So there might be, given the, the adjustments you made with grades, there might be some opportunity to do some arch shaped infiltrators or something that would allow the flow to fall into the structure, raise up to a certain level and then overflow versus just having a pipe right through the stone trench system. Yeah, we, we, we certainly could do um, uh, um, chambers. Uh, uh, I think um, uh, a coal vest uh, uh, prefers the, the, the pipe and stone approach. What I, I one, one thought is I could put a T in the in, in the perforated pipe, so there's actually a vertical pipe going down into the stone, so that uh, um, it's, uh, it ensures that the, the that the water gets down in, in, into the stone. I I, per I I understand we've had this conversation. I, I personally think it's going to work fine, but I understand your concern, and I'll certainly work with you to come up with something that you're more comfortable with. So, whether that's chambers or or a a, a T a T connection like that, uh, I just suggested I. I uh, think we can, we can work those out if the commission is comfortable uh, applying a condition uh, or this. Uh, uh, that sounds good, Derek. Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah. And that was out of the comments. I mean, it seems that's that's one of the bigger ones that um, you seem receptive to work with Derek on. So I don't know if any of the other commissioners had a chance to go through Derek's comments and <clears throat> see anything that jumps out at them. I'm, I'm just looking at what I believe is the one you just generated. It starts with the number one, the stone infiltration pictures, I believe we're just talking about. Correct. Okay, so, so basically, 
items three to the end, they're, they're just things they have to add to, the, to their maps, right? Is, is that correct, Derek? Your November 8th? Yes. Um, comment one, as we work it out, will require some adjustments to the plan also. Comment two is just I need some backup calculations. Um, as you said, I think the rest of them are just some minor changes to the plans. Okay. They're, they're just things they got to add to the plans that, you know, everybody, they, they don't look major. So it's just basically one and two are the things that you want to work out with the applicant. Is that, is that right? Do I understand that correctly? Yeah, if you were going to approve it, I would uh, approve it conditional on these comments. Um, and I'm willing to work with the applicant to reach some agreement on the water quality volume retention on site or the 50% of the water quality volume that's required. We would have no problem with that being a condition of approval. Okay. Uh, do we have any other discussion on the, the comments or the application as submitted? Okay, do we have a, a motion to approve the application conditional upon uh, the applicant addressing all of Derek's comments within his November 18th, 2020 memorandum? Okay, I'll make the motion. This is Brett Owen. Uh, I'll make the motion that we approve application number 725-20 ES Weathersfield Retail LLC 140 Silas Dean Highway parcel number 211-01 uh, subject to uh, the conditions that are referenced in Derek's memorandum of November 18th, 2020. Those 10 uh, items that need to be taken care of. Okay, do we have a second on that motion? I'll second. Okay, so that's Brian seconding and put it to a vote. So all in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? So that passes. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And Derek, do you have to do anything to pass the hosting or sharing? Uh, no, I'm, I think I'm going to put it up on the uh, screen for Frank to do his presentation. Okay. And then, uh, Brian, did you want to step yes, out at this time, for a moment? I'd, I'd like to recuse. Yes, I'd like to recuse myself. I'll put myself on mute and step away. Okay. Uh, so moving on to application number 726-20. Uh, CCC Construction LLC, 6 Vinny Drive, parcel number 043-021. It's an application for construction of a new home in close proximity to a regulated area. And with us tonight uh, presenting the application is... Frank DeBacco. Okay. So if you want to describe the, the application and it, did you want to share your screen at all? Um, if Derek can just put up page two is all I think we really need to see. Um, I think that shows everything. Okay. Uh, so on, on page two of the, of the, the documents, it's just a single family home, as we stated earlier. Um, it was placed in the, in the location of where the subdivision was originally approved. Um, if we're keeping about 40 to 50 feet away from the regulated area with the back porch, um, and we're trying to turn the lot into a walkout basement. Um, and again, it's a single family home. Uh, we've designed all the wetland issues that we've experienced previously on lot 16 that we're now getting ready to start. Um, so we followed everything uh, that was approved last time and just incorporated it into uh, these plans. Uh, the one thing I did notice though is the, um, in the silt fence and the hay bales, it was only meant to be a smaller portion where the walk-out portion where all the water is funneled to. So I'm gonna ask if they can potentially move some of the hay bales, um, but not the silt fence, because um, we're not gonna really do any major work anywhere else other than in the rear of the home where we're gonna do the, the cutting to open up the basement for the walk-out portion. Uh, I've gotten Derek's memos. 
we've incorporated most of them or all of them into them. Um, and the one memo that came in today dated the 18th, I was going through it and uh, I wanted to understand, Derek, if you wouldn't mind on item number one, item A, it's our intention just to grade along the property and rake things in. We're not gonna be doing any filling or any rework on the existing property of lot 19. So I'm kind of confused and where you're seeing that we're gonna do some regrading there, but if we are, it's not intended to be as such. It's just to blend everything into the contours that are existing. Yeah, um, so it's, just, it's right here, Frank, along the property lines, just showing that you are filling into that property. So I would just have your engineer just modify yeah, well, the lines here. It's really not a big deal, but I would show it that way. So when we approve something, it's not approving work on another property without. Yeah, so the contour line 218, we'll turn that up to get to 219.4, that little box, and we'll let that swell continue down as the intent. And it was just, I think, an oversight of the design team. Um, so we'll comply to that. That's not a big deal. Uh, the revision for the construction engines, I didn't realize that it didn't show the thickness. It will be six to eight inches thick on the construction entrance path for your item number B, so that's no problem. Um, add additional labels to using contour elevations. We can. Uh, I just need to understand where do you want to do that. I did see that they marked one um, as 218, and it's not supposed to be 216. As you remember, we'll have that fixed. If you need additional contours, we can do so. Uh, we're trying to keep the footing and the foundation above the water table that's on site. And we're gonna just slope all the dirt and property fill uh, to the curb lines in a gradual slope. Um, and then the roof leaders, like you asked, will then have uh, everything just dispersed right into the lawn so that it's not being funneled or pushed into um, the wetlands. The only thing that we're gonna pipe out towards the wetlands would be the footing drain. Uh, similar to what we've done in the other two homes. Um, so we'll bring that right to the edge. We'll put a little bit of riprap in there um, and then we have it for daylight, but uh, it's the plan is never to use it uh, for its entirety at all, but it's just there as a precaution and a, and a measure. Uh, item number D is the sloping of the sanitary. It's our intention to put it at a quarter of an inch a foot. We can label that on the drawings. Um, and put that in place. Uh, item number E, we're fine with, it was no big deal. Item number F, uh, it's okay. We can pick the cook corners you want and we'll put that in place. And as for the benchmark, we can label one and we can probably use the catch basin or, or something of that nature, whatever you would prefer. Um, so we can do that. And then the labels and the dewatering outlet detail, I didn't realize that they were all mumbled in like that. It's the same detail as item that we did on lot number 16. And I can try to pull the, the verbiage off with the, the surveyor and just put them off to the side. But it's a detail that we've been using throughout the development on the other two homes and when we built the road. It's gonna stay consistently the same, um, but we'll clean up the, the darkerness behind it so you can read it and its intent of what it's supposed to be. Uh, I didn't have any major issues with any of your comments, Derek, that you sent out today. Um, it just was like a little bit of cleanup that needed to be done on the plans. Um, and again, it's pretty simple. That's all I have. Does anybody have any uh, questions? So, Frank, when you, you started off, you said the clearing limit's going to be trimmed back? To no, not the, the, the clearing limits we wanted to leave where they are. I was referring to the hay bales. The hay bales were supposed to be drawn uh, between the contours of the 214 number uh, because that's where all the water was going to funnel as it goes up the bank and gets onto the 218 mark. I didn't want to put the hay bills up there because we're not doing any activity other than just putting in the seated lawn area. Um, so it's where the water channel was going to eventually go was where the intent of the hay bill was to go. Everywhere else was just going to get your standard silt fence detail. So all right, so you're gonna be clearing and, and grubbing as well and creating lawns, say, for example, on the, I forget what the north arrow is, but on the um, the western side of the lot there or the left side of the screen? Yeah, that whole, that 40 foot right away from the curb line, he did want to turn that into a lawn. Okay. Uh, so so we're just gonna, it's all invasive species that are up there pretty much. And we were gonna mow them down, dig them up a little bit and then just put in the lawn. So it seems prudent to keep the hay bales because that, that appears based on the grading to be down, down 
hill of that work. Okay. Am I reading that right, Derek? Yes, I think so. I think it'd be prudent to keep keep the sill fence and hay bales there to coincide with the clearing limit. You know, as it's presently shown, it makes sense. When I looked at it, it made sense to me initially. Did anybody else have any questions? Do we have a motion to approve the application with the, the condition that Derek's comments will be addressed uh, from his November 18th, 2020 memo. Did you want to add something about that hay bale thing that you were just talking about? I thought about that, but it, as it's presently shown on the map, it, I think that's the best uh, solution for what's being proposed with the clearing limit and the establishment of lawn because it's protecting the wetlands because it's all downhill of that work. Right. So, and then Frank, you agreed to, to leave it as is, right? Yeah, I'll leave it alone. Okay. So I don't think we have to do anything with it. Um, we'd be wanting to just basically motion with the items in Derek's memo of November 18th to be addressed. So is that a motion? Sure, sure, I'll make a motion. Okay. I'll make a motion, this is Brent Owen, that we approve application number 726-20 CCC Construction LLC, Six Vinny Drive, parcel number 043-021, uh, including the uh, items in Derek's memo dated uh, November 18th as conditions uh, for approval. And do we have a second on that? This is Clark, second that. Okay, so we'll put it to a vote. So all in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nobody's opposed, so we're good. So congratulations. Thank you again. You're welcome. So moving on to the Conservation Commission uh, business segment of the meeting. And Derek, do you have an update on the um, down, down would periodically each meeting give us an update on the development of the the um, open space parcel GIS effort that was ongoing to inventory all of our parcels and so I don't know if that's still ongoing or if Don wrapped that up before he retired. I don't specifically remember talking about it. I know he had been working on it. Um, I'm not sure where that stands, but I can find out and report back to you at the next meeting. Okay. Cause it, it would be good to have that, that database in the event that the town council would want to report you could easily, you know, generate a report from that data and provide them whatever information they're requesting. So, okay. Okay, so moving on to the general business portion of the meeting. We've got the approval of minutes dated August 19, 2020. Oh, did someone that Brian back in? Yeah, Brian's back in. Yep. So there was one, where is it? I did have one edit on the minutes. Just gonna find it. So it's on page three of four. And it's under the public meeting portion of the meeting. And it said Chairman Culpa noted the conditions on the approval included removing the coma. So that should be comma. There should be two M's in there. And that's all, all about, oh, I could see.
Does any, anybody else have anything or? No. Do we have a, a motion to approve the August 19, 2020 uh, meeting minutes with uh, the one edit? Uh, this is Clark Nelson, motion to approve the minutes. Okay, and do we have a second on that? I think was, did John want to second that or, or you're muted, John? Yeah, I'll second it. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so that passes. Go back to the agenda. Page two, maybe. All right, here we go. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, sorry. Um, so moving on to the correspondence uh, section of the meeting, we have 1785 Berlin Turnpike. Uh, it's a wetlands and floodplain violation letter from Derek Greger, PE, town engineer dated October 8th, 2020. So I don't know if you wanna talk about this a little bit, Derek. Sure. Um, I just wanted to state for the record, I did, forgot to mention it when um, Mr. DeBacco was up, but, the application that was included in your packet that he filled out was for Appendix B out of our regulations, which was for um, change in regulations or boundaries of inland wetlands. It was supposed to be Appendix A. I didn't catch that. Um, I think I might have sent him the wrong one. So I just wanted to make it clear for the record, it was a, a, a traditional uh, inland wetlands form application and not a modification to our wetland boundaries. Okay. All right. Okay, then yes, with regard to 1785 Berlin Turnpike, um, I had sent out, I had been out there in early October, um, looking at some work that was going on at the next property over and noted that there was some work happening at this property. I'll uh, share my screen here and just go through the plan with you. Um, <clears throat> so this is the, the property here, it's the gas station. I believe it's a mobile. Um, when I had gotten out there, there was a lot of work happening kind of back in this area of the site and you know, throughout everything behind the building. I think that what they were doing is they were placing the uh, underground tanks that were here. And as part of that, they started doing some other improvements. Um, when I had gotten back to the office, I looked at, you know, some plans we had uh, looked at pre preliminarily a few months ago where they were going to be, they're looking at an option to push this wall back and create some more parking behind the building. Um, initially, I thought that's what they were doing. Uh, so I went back out there and, and they did have some work going on in this, in this corner of the site that was within the floodplain. It wasn't as extensive as I initially thought, um, but I had issued the, uh, the cease and desist or notice of violation letter just to make them aware we had an issue. Um, I had, had some conversations with the owner and with Close Jensen and Miller, who is their engineer, who is doing some of the design, preliminary design for the rest of the site um, about options. And they proposed removing some of the excess. Uh, there's a lot of wood debris on the slope up here that's in the floodplain. They were gonna take some of that debris out, restabilize the slopes that, that had been disturbed in this area with erosion control mat and grass to get it to grow, um, which, basically would put it pretty close back, pretty much back to where it was. I don't think there were significant grade changes in this area and they were just gonna put everything back to the way it was until they came through with a more substantial application. During construction, maybe a week or so later, I got a um, phone call from Close Jensen and Miller saying that they were in the middle of doing that work. I think it was raining. This, this, this is a fairly steep slope. Um, I'm guessing it might be one to one. It was starting to sink and they were afraid they were gonna lose the wall I mean, the blocks they had at the top of the wall and just lose the whole slope into the wetland. So they requested if we were, if I allow them to at least put in some riprap, at least for now, to stabilize it, to prevent it washing down into the wetland area, which you see by this yellow line, um, they hadn't really gotten into the wetlands. It was more just kind of into the floodplain as far as what they had done. So I, I agreed and said, yeah, I would prefer you to do that than to have a, have a bigger issue happen. So um, there was some correspondence back and forth. I included that in the, in the agenda packet I sent you. Um, these are a couple of photos of the site. This is uh, looking southbound at the slope. Uh, this is the dumpster in the back, the building here to the left. As you can see, uh, they, they've stoned it pretty well. Um, they did have some silt fence in there uh, below. There's a culvert outlet here. So 
as part of what they were doing, they rebuilt this catch basin. So there's a culvert outlet that comes out through here as was always the case. Um, they just redid the structure. Um, this view here is looking more northbound from at the other direction. Um, you can see how far it carried around. So it's a U shape of uh, slope stabilization around uh, that area of the site. This is up top side. This is the new structure. Um, I talked with their engineer about the fact that everything is is graded to this slope and they had this basin here and it was open on the back side and, and all these blocks were, were had openings between them. I said, you know what, this water is just going to be pouring over the slope. So they, they agreed and they put some curbing in. Uh, you can see a little bit here along the edges of the blocks and they put some curb behind the basin so that way any water flow is being directed down to the basin and going through like it used to do. So there's no change in runoff conditions. Um, this is just another picture looking to the right of what you see here from where the basin is of what they had done. So at this point, my understanding is they're in the process of having wetlands flagged and doing a more substantial plan to come back to the commission for additional parking in the back. That will involve fill into the floodplain, um, which will require compensatory storage, which given the way this site is and the limited space they have, I think going to be somewhat difficult for them to come down into here. And we had that conversation when we had the very early discussions with the town planner and myself, um, the engineer and the owner explained to them and the engineer certainly understood that there was gonna be a challenge in, in meeting that. So I don't know where that stands other than I've been told they are working on it and they plan to come back to the commission at some point for that. So, you know, I guess the decision at this point is, um, I don't feel they really work into the wetland area here with any of that stone, does the commission feel it's necessary for them to come in for um, a formal permit for what's been done? Or, or, or are we satisfied, or are you satisfied rather that, um, you know, it's been stabilized and the work has stopped and. Has there been any deposition into the wetlands? Like as far as, you know, erosion from no. the site or no? Yeah, no, I mean, I was out there. It looked like pretty natural back here. You could see this. Okay. They had a large tree that overturned. Um, and half the roots are still in the ground and we discussed it. I, they were interested in taking that out, but in talking with their engineer and the owner, they decided not to, because I explained that now you're in the wetlands and now you're doing some more earthwork. So they were going to leave that for now and address that as part of a later application. Um, but I felt like uh, I didn't see any impact to the wetland as, as it was. So what they were, they basically were replacing the tanks and then all of a sudden that slope started to go. So. Yeah, I don't know why they ended up over here. I think the project just grew. The tanks were getting put in behind the canopy over here. And I, I don't know, they just decided they wanted to open this up. Maybe this basin was collapsing. I don't know the details. They replaced it with a new structure. And in doing that, they opened up this whole slope. So when yeah. I first went out there, this was all dirt. And they didn't have much in the way of a silk fence at the bottom of the slope. Um, and it was all exposed. So I mean, it seemed like a domino effect. So it's all, it's, it's stabilized now, right? Yes. Okay. So there's no, and then they're like, they're working on coming into us for sure. Or. Well, nothing's for sure. They, they said they, that's what they were planning to do. Um, I would make the decision based on what's out there today, if that's going to be adequate or not. Cause I don't know if that will actually uh, come to pass. This is all kind of informal, though, in a way, isn't it? I mean, there's no, no real record of this or what they've done or the town's approved or anything. Yeah, I think it's just an informal discussion similar to the 123 Robeth we discussed earlier tonight. Um, you know, does the commission feel they should come in for a permit or, or are you satisfied it's been addressed by staff? And, you know, we'll see what, what transpires, if anything, with this site going forward. Derek, are you satisfied? Yes, because looking at what was out there um, when I went out initially and looking at the aerial photos and such, I don't think they've really changed anything. I think this, this slope was always pretty much where it is now. Um, it's stabilized with rock instead of it was vegetated before and vegetation would have been a better option. But I think given the fact that it is that steep and they were having some sloughing off and issues with the wetlands right downstream, I, I prefer to have that. Uh, I didn't see any wetland impact when I was out there. I felt it was protected. 
And as far as the floodplain, um, they, like I said, they did do some work, mostly this area of the site. Down here is where the floodplain kind of is roughly, not based on elevation, just based on the firm maps. Um, but I think this area has been put back to what was there previously. There's no substantial, everything's pretty flat out there before it gets down the slope. So I don't feel they put any fill in that would be um, adversely impact storage capacity. And ordinarily for this type of work, we would require a permit. If someone was proposing this. True. Um, now what do you guys, what do you guys think? This is your point, they should have come in and got the permit before doing all this work. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure that what Eric has got them doing is, is gonna cover things, but I, I agree with John. I mean, it's kind of like the guys building the docks on town property in a way. They, they just go ahead and do it and maybe it's good. You know, in this case, you caught them and, and it looks, looks right. In the other case, that dock, for example, well, they put a picnic table there. Well, that thing could rot out and somebody could get injured. Um, you know, where you don't have people coming in with applications and you don't get to look at things appropriately. In general, as a rule, uh, then you run the risk somebody else down the street might just go ahead and do something that we really don't want and we don't have an application, you got a problem. Um, I don't know, I really, I really agree with John that uh, they probably should have come in with something. We could have them come in for a permit for the work that's been done to date. I believe they're going to be coming in, if that's what Derek mentioned, that they may be coming in for a larger application. So if the slope is stable for the winter months and we maybe give them a grace period of two or three months to come in with a larger application, um, I mean, maybe we hold off or just ask them to come back with, a, with, with one application instead of, you know, piecemealing it together and if they choose never to come back, then we, uh, you know, revisit it and, and see if they have done anything more uh, to make it, to make their wrong or right is I guess what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and I, I was leaning towards requiring them to come in for an application. You know, you've got these temporary measures, but then you, which is a, you know, think of it like stage construction. You want, you know, this is phase one where we temporarily, you know, shore up everything. And then, you know, stage two inside of your, your plan set could be uh, the final built condition. So in one package, you'd be permitting both activities. You know, I, I understand if that. makes that. any sense. I, I, yeah, I agree that one application would, would be the best, but there's no control that they're going to do that. I, I think what they need to understand is one way or the other, they come in with an application. If they're going to add on to the parking and we have something we have to say about that, well, fine, put them together and, and we, we just do it all at once. Uh, otherwise, uh, I, I think, you know, to cover the situation, uh, something ought to come in. Yeah, at a minimum, we need to permit this work. <clears throat> and then, you know, based on the information that they present, there could be some additional, you know, follow on stuff that, that we could see, you know, seems pretty stable now, but, um, I should know this, but what is the cost of a permit? Typically, the cost is $135. If an application, the commission determines a significant impact and needs to go to a public hearing, and there's an additional $50 charge, so that's $185. 
And is there a fine for not having a permit and doing this work? There could be a fine enforced for doing yeah. it without a permit. We have, we have the ability to. Do we want to vote on this or just to see if we're all on the same page and have them coming in for a permit? Or do we all agree? So we could put it to a vote. So all in favor of having them come in for a permit? Aye. Um, I'll second that. Okay, so we'll do a motion. Yeah, I think you'd have to. Okay, so um, we have a motion to uh, have them come in for a, a permit for the work that's been done to date. And then Brett second it, right? Yeah. So we'll put it to votes so all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we'll have them come in. Okay, I'll notify them and um get that started and then 1785 berlin turnpike we have a wetlands and floodplain violation letter response from close jensen and miller oh that's that's the same thing yeah really a through d were all part of this discussion okay so we've covered you know all of those different violation letters a through then, c I'm sorry, a, D is a, a separate through C. Issue. And then D is a DEP letter regarding the proposed reclassification of groundwater at 214 Church Street, dated October 29, 2020. And then did you want to, do you have any background on this at all, Derek? I think you're on mute. I am, sorry. Um, I don't have a lot of background on this. This came in through the mayor. Uh, I believe this site had come through in the past for um, some applications for different work. Yeah, I remember that they had come in and you know, they wanted to do some various cleanup around the property. Right, I, I think this is related to that, um, that the DEP is, is changing what they're classifying the water as. Um, it says in order to facilitate site remediation. Because I know okay. they did have some contaminated material they were taking out, so it might be that DEP, given that concern, wants to lower it from a GA to a GB um, with that concern, and they're just notifying us of the plan to do that. So this is just really an FYI for a commission to be aware. Makes sense. More related. Okay, then. I think that's about it. Do you have any questions on this or? Something there's none. Do we have anything else to cover this meeting or? Do you wanna let us know about your discussion with the town manager and the town attorney about the 1860 reservoir? It seems like Seems pretty frequent that you know the issue kind of pops up out there with the docks. Well, um, I'm not I'm not aware of new docks being installed. This issue of there being existing docks for a long time has been brought up for many years. Um, you know, I was texting with the town manager a little bit earlier. I and I, I know he's working on it. Uh, one of the concerns is cost. Um, just looking at legal costs at different options, it could be quite expensive for the town and it's going to it may come down to a decision by council as to how they want to proceed with it. If they're willing to spend the money to, to go down one route or the other. Um, and that's all in discussion, but yeah, I could circle back with him and, and report back to you for, for the next meeting. Okay. I think that's it. Does anybody have anything else to discuss? Maybe a motion to adjourn. And then do we have a second on that? Is that clear? Oh, John. Okay. So all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
and that passes. So that's it. All right, boys, have a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>